Hello, hello, and welcome. I am Kat, the Nurse Flipper, and today I'm going to go over some tips on buying from online auctions. If you do not know, I spend thousands of dollars every month on online auctions. I sold over $100,000 the last two years in each year, and auctions are where I get 85 to 90 percent of what I buy. So I'm going to go over some tips. I'll tell you a few auction sites that I use and I'll go over things to look out for and how you can best take advantage of buying online and why you would want to buy online versus thrifting or garage sales. So let's get started. I do want to say I hope everyone has been having a great Thanksgiving and I hope the rest of this Thanksgiving is good for you. I'm recording this on Thanksgiving before I go to my family's house so I hope you guys are having a great Thanksgiving first off. So second a lot of you might wonder if I'm saying I get all of this inventory from auction why are you seeing all of these thrift and garage sale videos from me. It is still fun to go out and hands-on dig through stuff find stuff there's like a little bit more of a rush to that than there is with auctions but you never know when you walk into a thrift store or you walk up to a garage sale what what you're going to find if anything and if you find it is it going to be at the right price however when you have online auctions you're going to find something whether it be local or shipped and I do both so I get a lot of questions about online auctions with shipping. What do I recommend? So that is a lot of what I would like to go over with you today. So the reason I prefer them, as I said, you're not always going to find stuff at garage sales and thrift stores. Online auctions you can do from home. You can do it from work. You can pretty much look at online auctions no matter where you are. I happen to live in the middle of nowhere and there are not very many close sourcing opportunities. So for me to go sourcing, it is at least an hour drive each way, plus the time that I spend there. I prefer, if I'm gonna get a lot of stuff or I need inventory, to go look at online auctions. The number one auction site I use is highbid.com. I also have a little local one to me that like four or five estate companies use. So I would suggest to you, go to Google and put in online estate auction and your city or maybe the closest big city if you don't live in a big city. And there might be some smaller companies that I'm not gonna know about because I'm not in your area. And then another one that is good is Shop Goodwill. The prices have started going up as the popularity has went up. I have not been using Shop Goodwill as much. I do still occasionally look on there, but that is probably at the bottom of my list as far as auctions that I use. So when you are buying from online auctions, you can either go and pick the stuff up or you can have it shipped to you. And I will caution you that not all auctions ship. So the first thing you want to do before you get too deep into an auction is go to their auction terms. There is typically a shipping tab and read if they ship. And if they do, read their terms. Most of them are not going to give you an exact price on what you are looking at, but you'll at least know if it is available. If you see that they use a shipping company such as a UPS store, I would tell you to expect a little bit higher shipping prices because those stores are going to charge you a little more than if the auction offers you in-house shipping. Now there are some auctions that will ship but they are going to charge you a lot. I have seen up to $40 per lot for a handling fee. That means they'll ship but you're going to pay if they do. So make sure you look at those terms and make sure that they will ship above all else before you start looking at other items. So when I am searching for shipped items, I am going to look at non-breakables. A few people have asked, and I know if you watch me, you know I do a lot of collectibles and breakable items. Those items are coming from auctions that I drive to and I pick up. Once in a while, I will get breakable items shipped to me, 
but that is definitely a minority of the time. I'm going to show you real quick an auction buy I got this week that came in just to give you an example of things that I look for. So these are vintage handkerchiefs and linens and I got these for $8 for all of these. I ended up paying $12 in shipping so I got 31 of them for $19. I am less than a dollar in which is a lot of my business model. A dollar into 10, 15, 20 is an excellent profit. I also though am going to show you at the end of this some items that I paid over $700 a piece for and that I went and picked up. So I have a big range of what I buy off of auctions and you have to decide for you what is best but when you are getting stuff shipped i would recommend non-breakables and that really depends on what you want to sell i love vintage linens like the hankies i love vintage hand towels and, and those are things that i know they can't break it doesn't matter how they ship them they cannot break them and then another thing i'll go ahead and show you is this glass pendant necklace this I paid $30 for it. So this kind of gets into the pricing. So I told you I paid less than a dollar each for those hankies. They were in a lot. This was an individual item. This is Lundberg Studios and this necklace should sell for about $150. I paid $30 for the necklace and I paid $10 in shipping. So I'm $40 into this necklace and it should sell for $150 making it really close to $100 profit. Now that's not 10 times in my money, but $100 profit is pretty good. And that is something that I personally am trying to move into is getting into higher dollar items. I also want to say, if this is something that sounds intimidating to you or you're scared about going online and bidding, I have a sourcing membership. There should be a join button below every video, sometimes only visible on the computer. So if you're not seeing it, you might need to get on a computer. My $9.99 membership level is sourcing. I go online, I share my computer screen, and I look by your zip code for items for you. That can be lower cost. It could be if you only want to source high dollar items. And some people actually join and don't even have me source for them, but they watch what I'm doing. They see how I'm looking through things. They see what I pay attention to and they come hang out. So tomorrow night is going, not tomorrow, sorry, Saturday in two days. I was thinking it was Friday. It's not on saturday which is actually my birthday we are going to be doing our next sourcing live so now would be a great time to join if you're interested because there's another sourcing live in two days so that is a 9.99 membership level if you want to check it out get a little more help watch a little more in-depth live sourcing on an auction site that you would be able to use yourself so hit that join button below if you're interested in that come hang out with us saturday on my birthday we'll have a little members only birthday party for me find some good stuff for you and it will be a great time so that is a high dollar item this is another item that i got in recently all of this stuff has come in within the last two weeks so if you don't know this box i would say learn it tiffany and company is very very high dollar stuff this here has the bag it has the original box and it is a golf club keychain sterling silver christmas is coming i probably will list this today or tomorrow to make sure it's up by christmas time sells as high as 230 dollars. i paid 30 dollars for that plus i paid 12 in shipping now this could have went first class but that auction chose to ship it priority and you really have no control over how they're going to ship your items so keep that in mind and when you're looking at stuff make sure that you leave yourself enough room for profit like those 30 hankies for 20 dollars I only need to sell two of them to be in the profit and then I've got 28 more left. The two that I just told you I paid up on, I searched Worth Point, found a sold history. I know what they can sell for and I know that even if they had charged me $20 in shipping on any of those, the hankies, the keychain, or the necklace, I still would have had plenty of room for profit. So keep that in mind. Some auction houses will give you estimates on shipping. I choose not to do that because what I do, let's let's say I'm searching for vintage handkerchiefs. Well, once I find those vintage handkerchiefs in an auction that is a shipping auction, 
I will go and look at other items from that seller. So then I might find vintage tablecloths, just, just as an example. But I will look through every other item that they have because if I'm going to pay for shipping, I might as well bundle things and get the most out of my money that I'm paying for shipping. The more items that you have in that shipping, the less per piece you're paying into that item. Now I do, mostly I pick up auctions as if I am buying a lot. I search up to 250 miles, not because I will go 250 miles, not that I won't if I find, if I find a good auction, but if I put 100 miles, I only get like two results, but when, and unfortunately, high bid doesn't have anything between 100 and 250. I really wish they had 150. They don't. So I put 250 in and then I get like 50 results. So there are probably three or four auctions that are like 105 miles from me. And if I put that 100 mile cutoff, I don't see them. And so I've learned I have to put in 250 miles. So if you're searching, a lot of people, and I know this from doing my sourcing live every other Saturday, a lot of people have a lot of auctions within 50 miles of them, quite a few. So if you're looking for a big amount of inventory, then I would suggest looking at those local auctions. And I will go ahead and link up top my high bid auction on how to actually use the site. That is not something I'm covering. This is more just some tips and tricks as far as once you're a little more familiar using the site. So I pick up if I'm looking for a lot of inventory. And you have to be very, very careful with these auctions, especially if reselling is something you do part time, because a lot of times there is only one day for pickup. It is not always a weekend day. It might be a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday. And sometimes it's as small of a window as four hours. Like they might only let you pick up from eight to noon. So if you are picking up, not getting stuff shipped, definitely check when that pickup date is and make sure that you are available to go or have someone. When I do pick up, sometimes my mom will have to go for me because I work every Thursday and a lot of pickup days are Thursday. So my mom or my husband will go and pick items up for me. So make sure that you are available during that pickup window. Another thing that you really wanna pay attention to when you are buying online auctions is the buyer's premium. That price is added onto your bid price kind of as like a finder's fee for that auction company. So let's say it's 15%, your item's $10, you're gonna pay $11.50. So you really wanna calculate that buyer's premium as well as shipping if you were doing shipping and think of all of these things that are going into the cost of that item that is why when i buy local i fill up my car if i'm going to spend two hours driving there two hours driving back i'm going to make sure that i'm getting probably minimum a thousand dollars in profit most times quite a bit more because the gas that it takes, the time it takes, you have to load it, you have to unload it, and then there's also the listing. So keep that in mind when you are doing local, that's why I buy so much typically. Now, if you're lucky and have like a close auction house, then you might not have to buy as much to make it, you know, make sense. Now, when you are on high bid or most other auction sites, you want to look at what type of auction it is. So there are several different auctions. There is a webcast auction. What that means is leading up to the auction, you are able to put bids in, but then the day of the auction, there are gonna be people there in person that are bidding against your bid. So let's say, and it's just like eBay, where you put your highest bid and it'll only bid as high as it has to a proxy bid. So if you put $50, the bid's at 30 when it's time for that auction to start. If somebody in-house bids 40, your proxy bid would bid to 45 for you, but if they go bid 55, you're out. So when you are bidding in webcast auctions, nine times out of 10, I would say you need to make sure you are available to sit at that computer, watch until all of your bidding is done because the house is gonna win over yours a lot of times. If somebody's standing there in front of them, they can go a little bit higher. So if you're not watching that active auction, then you might miss out. And it does have it up on the computer screen. You'll see the item and there's chat. It'll say 
going once, going twice, just like you were at a live auction, but you're watching it via chat. That is my least favorite type of auction because I have to sit there and watch it. And that kind of defeats the per purpose of being able to go and find inventory when you want and not have to be somewhere at a particular time. Now, the next one is proxy bid. That one, actually, actually it might be a little worse than webcast because that one, it is a in-person auction and when you bid, that's your final bid once the auction goes live. So you have no chance of fighting the in-person bidder. So if the auction comes on, they say a high bid of 50, the in-house person bids 55, you just lost. So I don't tend to bid in those or webcast auctions very often. I will do some webcasts. If there's stuff I really want, I will do it. I will sit, I will watch, and I will bid. Um, and then my favorite and the one I definitely would recommend to you the most is online only. And that means the only place that people are putting in bids is the same way that you are on that auction website. And then there are different types of clothes. With high bid, they are all soft clothes. And what that means is nobody can come and steal that auction from you at the last second. So if there is a bid in the last two minutes on that auction, then it will extend the time by a minute. So if you're watching, somebody thinks they're gonna be slick coming 10 seconds before, steal it out from under you, no go. They're gonna extend that auction by a minute, sometimes two minutes, it depends on the auction house, and that will give you a chance to increase your bid. So in that case, you kind of do need to have an eye on it. But what I do a lot of times is I put what I'm willing to pay. If I know I'm willing to go up to say $20 on those handkerchiefs where I'm a dollar in before shipping, I'm gonna put 20, set it, forget it. And if I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. And that's probably a better mentality because it's really easy to get caught up in the auction bug and you just keep bidding and you end up paying more than you should for that item. So you can get anything from these auctions anything they will ship breakables and i'll tell you a lot of my kachina dolls have come from auctions but about 25 to 50 percent of them arrived to me broken and i know that and that's a risk i take from buying kachinas from far away but i can't find kachinas locally so if i want the kachinas that's how i have to get them a lot of times and i have been just grouping together the broke ones and selling them as a lot is what i have been doing but I can't be mad at that auction house because I know that they are breakable. I know they are fragile and I'm the one who chose to have them shipped. So you don't know how they're gonna ship your stuff. Just remember that they could be a great shipper or they could be a not so great shipper. And keep, keep a paper, you know, keep a little book, write a note to yourself if they do ship good and then Maybe if you see something that's a little bit fragile from that auction company that you got something in great shape, they shipped well, then you know. There are a few that I have bought from multiple times shipped that I would trust a little more to ship fragile items than others. So definitely keep a little tally if you're buying shipped. If you're buying local, then you're going to go pick it up and it's okay. Now I get a lot of... There's a lot of damage that I didn't see in the pictures on this auction. Well, that's what an auction is. And honestly, I prefer the auctions that take bad pictures. Why? Why would I want them to take bad pictures? Well, because the bidding's not gonna go as high. So if I see a really valuable thing in there and they haven't taken good pictures, then I can get that item for cheaper. So I prefer that. I prefer lots, I prefer, <laughs> Like, I'm okay with one picture. Give me one picture. If I see something valuable, I'm gonna bid. And other people might not because they wanna see more detail. I am good with not seeing detail, but it, it, it is a gamble. It is a gamble buying from auctions a lot of times, especially those lots like, like my hankies could have been covered in stains. That's, that's because this had one picture of these like laid out together, but they're actually, they're, beautiful and immaculate condition and they're even ironed so but i took a chance i might have gotten a few that were stained and that would be part of it and that would be okay now as far as how much to pay 
that's really a personal decision but i the the main thing that i want to get across to you is you need to take all of the other fees into account your bid price your buyer's premium the shipping if you are not getting it shipped your gas your time etc make sure you take all of that into account when you are buying because if you pay half of something and then plus you've got your time your gas it might not be worth it to do so now some people are okay just doubling their money I unless it's a very high dollar item want to at least triple or quadruple but I prefer 10 times I prefer those dollar into 10 two dollars into 20 not always feasible but more feasible if you're buying lots and I also want to say if you don't find local auctions don't think that means there aren't any you need to search because these auctions typically go up every day there are new auctions they are ending new ones are coming new companies are starting to use it so you need to check pretty frequently at least as far as high bid to see if there are new auctions in your area and you might find a couple and maybe they're too high price they put everything individually and that does happen a lot of these companies list everything individually just like you and i would on ebay or another platform those I typically will skip. Not always. I showed you the Tiffany Golf Club ring. I showed you the Lundberg necklace. Those were individual items that I bought, but they need to be higher dollar, higher profit items for me to bid on individual items. Everyone has, not everyone, a lot of you have asked where I get my box lots, where do I get my cart lots? Those are all high bid auctions. So you can get like a tote full of stuff and they might only have one picture. Some of them will put more or you could get a whole cart like a little, you know, think of a restaurant busboy cart. You could get that whole cart full of merchandise and that's how I got a lot of expensive items. What they will do is they might do individuals of some and then at the end they're like, whatever, this is all going in a box or all going in a cart. So a good thing too would be go to the last page of those auctions with individual items and see if they have some lots in there because they might be mixed in and the lots are typically where i find my money makers and they are hidden and that's where the whole kind of gamble comes in but it is a very calculated gamble because i know say i pay fifty dollars all i need are five ten dollar items in that box to break even but chances that i'll find items worth more are pretty good and one of the things i do and i would recommend you do as well is look at the stuff in the auction so most times these auctions are from a single estate and you can tell if those people had expensive taste or if the items are on the lower value side so if i see box lots in an auction that has all high-end stuff i'm gonna be more likely to bid on those and buy stuff all right if you have any questions at all about auctions please comment down below check out my how to use high bid video again if you want to come hang out with us saturday on my birthday and every other saturday you either want to see how it works see what i find or have me look for you it's all included in that 9.99 membership hit the join button below check it out come hang out with us saturday and i'm going to show you now a few buys that i got from my last auction that i paid over 700 dollars a piece for i will tell you guys it is three items three items i picked them up from daytona beach florida while i was in mount dora so it was only an hour there and an hour back since i was already in mount dora i spent a total with tax and fees of 1700 dollars now there are three items two of them are worth over three thousand dollars a piece maybe a little bit less the other i'm hoping to get over 200 so let me show you that now again happy thanksgiving i will see you guys tomorrow with the rest of the footage from renningers that i actually said i was doing today but i decided to do this instead so you will come along with me to renningers antique fair tomorrow and then on saturday we will have our live sourcing membership and i think saturday i'm going to do a how to sell on facebook video so let's look at these items that i got so this is not one of the expensive ones this one is a lilo and stitch as elvis this is a musical snow globe i paid a little over 100 for this and i'm hoping to get 200 dollars for it this is one of the two i paid 750 dollars for this 
This is 50th anniversary Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And I did use Worth Point to comp this out. So let me go ahead and show you on the back here. And you can see the detail on this is absolutely amazing. This is a Capa di Monte Disney piece limited to 2,500. It is very big. I'll put my hand there so you guys can see. It is actually about 22 inches long. So I paid $750. It should sell hopefully for $2,500 plus, and I should make over a $1,000 profit after fees. And then the last item is this Walt Disney Sleeping Beauty. This is another Capa di Monte Disney. This one has Sleeping Beauty there, and it also has the Fairy Godmothers. So this one should again go for about 3000 So those are two items. And then most of the items that are on my shelf here, you can see this is a vase worth about 2000 This is a dragonfly lamp that Jocelyn Crazy Lamp Lady got me and she got this on auction for me. And then some of these nice glass pieces were also from online auctions as well as these high-end flapper purses. So most of the stuff you see here on my display shelves did come from auction. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. I look forward to seeing you in the members only sourcing live on Saturday. And I will also have a video out for you guys tomorrow. Happy Thanksgiving.